Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. Today I'm going to be talking about Irish whiskies and my favorite Irish whiskies of the year. So I have 12 of them to go through, so I'm going to just kind of rattle them off. I'm going to start at my least favorite going up to my top favorite. Now the good news is I didn't really have anything bad this year. So none of them are going to be just clearly don't bother buying it, but there's definitely a clear-cut loser and a clear-cut winner. So let's start with that least favorite, the Jameson IPA Caskmates. This one is the epitome of okay. <laughs> you know, you can find it in any bar. It's interesting enough to try, but frankly, save your money. And along those same lines, we'll go Jameson Stout Edition. This is the better of the two, according to the Versus episode that I did, and maybe giving a, a little taste right before filming. But in general, both of them can probably be skipped. Moving along to another that could probably be skipped is the Bushmills 10. So Bushmills, you know, they've got the original white, they've got the red, which meh, and then you've got the black, which is very good. Then you've got this, which feels like they just tried to make something with an age statement. Here's the problem. A 10 year old Irish whiskey should not have any real bite to it, at least in my op uh, opinion, it should be refined. I mean, you're dealing with a triple distilled thing that is ultimately going to be very smooth, almost by default, unless you kind of screw it up. And in my opinion, they kind of screwed this up. So the 10, it, it tastes almost like a bad Irish coffee to me. Um, not that it has co coffee notes, but it's more just reminiscent to me of an Irish coffee that somebody poured too much Irish whiskey into, to the point where you don't really taste the coffee, you just kind of like, oh boy, that's, that's a heavy pour. Um, which, you know, some people might like. Some people, including myself, usually, but I, I think you get what I'm trying to say. It doesn't feel well balanced, so let's just leave it at that. Moving on to things that are a little bit better, the Kilbegan Single Grain. Now, this one is still kind of on the cusp of it's hard to recommend hard. Um, I still think it's kind of worth it. If you like Irish whiskey, you should try this one, but the Kilbegan Single Grain is also a little unrefined for my taste. <clears throat> so when you taste it, it, you know you're drinking Irish whiskey, or you know you're drinking kind of something that should maybe age a little longer. It's probably a good way to put it. All right, next one's gonna be a little bit of a surprise, I think, only because the price point does not necessarily uh, reflect how good it is. Red Spot. This is a Irish whiskey that's finished in bourbon, sherry, and marsala casks. And that is interesting. For me, it doesn't work. But I also don't think, I think a lot of the community probably agrees this is not the best of the three spots, or four if you want to count the blue, which just came out. But the red spot is a disappointment to me personally. It's expensive. It's like a hundred bucks, if not more. And uh, thankfully, this was sent to me by a viewer, so thank you. But it also just, it, it broke my heart to even tell him that I didn't love it, because, you know, he sent it over to me with the hope that I would love it. And it just... It just wasn't my thing, so, oh well. All right, and lastly, uh, at least on, on this side, we've got the Jameson Black Bear, which you guys know I enjoy. I, I found myself pounding through this bottle while uh, doing my initial review of it, just kinda, you know, I've always talked about sitting on my couch, drinking my whiskey, taking my notes. I found myself having so many of these that I had to stop myself. <laughs> and uh, I found that to be just a great sign, you know, of a well-made whiskey. It's nothing that's going to be amazing and blow your socks off, at least not of the 12 that I'm about to talk about, but it is very good. And in my opinion, very worth your money. All right, moving along. Uh, so we've gone through half. This is the bottom half, right? Next, we have regular green spot. A good whiskey, but Again, kind of not, not like the best, you know, a, a great base level for spot. If you think about this being spots, well, nah, the blue kind of throws things off, right? The blue is seven years aged. I think this is 10, right? I'm pretty sure, whatever, I'll confirm. But um, either way, this is kind of their baseline. This is their flagship and it's a good one. They they did a good job for whatever amount they're pumping out of this. It's, it's pretty good. All right, moving along. Redbreast 12, a lot of you guys will be excited. This is great. No bad things to say about Redbreast 12. It's just that the next ones are still better. So Redbreast 12 is the, again, the intro to Redbreast. Redbreast overall is expensive. Um, it's good. It's, I've never felt like I regretted how much I spent on Redbreast, but I've definitely, 
I've definitely kept myself from buying it because of the price points, if that makes sense. It's more just like, am I really in the mood to spend like $70 today on, on an Irish whiskey? Usually the answer is no, sometimes it's yes, but either way, the Redbreast 12 is a very solid buy if you feel like spending the money. All right, fourth from the top, Teeling. Now Teeling is interesting because it's about half the price of the Redbreast here, but Teeling makes great stuff across the board. Everything I've had from them, I really enjoyed. So no negative things to say whatsoever about Teeling. Um, go out and buy some, <laughs> all right? So my top three, and I'll give a, a more in-depth reason for each one of these. So Konamara, just the regular no age statement. I've had the 12 recently, and I'll do a review of that probably coming up in March. Let's just say I'm hoping that opening the bottle changes the flavor a little bit. But let's talk about the regular Connemara. So when you look at this, this is a unique Irish whiskey, at least in my opinion. This is a peated Irish whiskey. And that peat is a unique flavor that I enjoy a lot in scotch and I enjoy a lot in this Irish whiskey. It's, it's earthy, it's kind of sweet, but mostly it's just unique. And that's why after, you know, you guys know I do an Irish whiskey month every March, and I've tasted a lot of Irish whiskeys, and frankly speaking, a lot of them taste very similar. I mean, you could say the same for bourbons, you could say the same for eh, maybe less scotch, but a lot of bourbons taste very similar too, but this one truly stands out. It's interesting, it's worth your money, and you should go buy it. All right, let's move on. This one is a favorite. Redbreast 12 cast strength, or just basically Redbreast cast strength. But let me tell you, this is a tasty whiskey. This one's making me smile just thinking about it, which I usually use as my metric for whether something is fondly remembered or whether I'm forcing it a little bit, which I try not to do. Um, but the Redbreast 12 cast strength is just fantastic. I have to stop myself from drinking this one because I know I'm gonna get into trouble. And it's expensive, again, it's expensive, but it's worth every dollar. So you should definitely find your way to buying the Red Breast Cat Strength this year, or I guess next year, there's only a couple days left. Lastly, my favorite, and if you've been paying attention, you could probably guess what it is, Yellow Spot. So Yellow Spot, is another amazing whiskey. I mean, I, I need to use a thesaurus because I feel like I'm just saying amazing or amazing or amazing <laughs> over and over again. So Yellow Spot tastes buttery. It tastes kind of just smooth and, and a little, nothing that you would like, if you look at that, you might have thoughts of bananas or, or other kind of fruits or maybe like butterscotch or something, but butterscotch isn't quite there. It's buttery, it's creamy, it's smooth, it's delicious, and it is, in my opinion, the epitome of what spot whiskeys can do. And I would love to see anything that they claimed was better than the yellow spot. So as far as as far as these all go, I, I just wanna kinda talk a little bit again, because my favorite lists tend to be formulated a bit on, on memories and, and things that I've done while drinking, right? The yellow spot, is, is cool to me because I was in New York City with this guy, Mike, and we were drinking together. And it's one that I've wanted to buy for a while. And I finally treated myself to it that night. We were sitting in a bar, it was an Irish bar, of course, in New York City, and we were both buying each other drinks. And you know, he bought, I, he bought me something, and then I said, you know what, I've wanted to have Yellow Spot for so long, I'm gonna buy us both a, sh uh, I say shot, but you know, like a, a pour of this. And we were both just like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And I still feel that way every time I drink this. So if you haven't tried the Yellow Spot, it's expensive. You know, it's like a hundred bucks, 110 maybe. It's still totally just worth it. If you like Irish whiskey whatsoever, even if you like Scotch whiskey, there's a lot of, lot of uh, similarities here. So that does it for my Irish whiskeys of 2020. I'm loving this format. I think it's good to break up all of these things that I've done into the different categories because it's too hard to pick or just do one video where it's my top whiskey of the year. I'll still be doing one of those in a couple of days. But for now, this is my Irish whiskey. So thank you for joining me. If you enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe and check out the links in the description, all kinds of good stuff in there and uh, check out the Patreon. So thank you very much for joining me here and have a great rest of your night.
Cheers.